Now, a year after a ravaging earthquake, life on Haiti is racked by cholera, political turmoil and painfully slow reconstruction. But for thousands who found refuge in the United States, the future is no brighter. Haitian immigrants are facing deportation and not only from the country, as Marina Podnaya reports. Most American women can relate to Janae Montreville. Let's look for clothes. A working wife and busy mother home with the kids while dad is at work. We lay back, you know, we work hard so we can provide the best for our children. But I also describe my family as a family that can't really make plans for the future. If the U.S. government gets its way, Jemaya, Josiah, Janaya, and Antone will become forever fatherless. Okay, sweetie. And Janae will enter the pool of single U.S. mothers struggling to make ends meet. I probably have to put the home up for sale or maybe get a roommate Mommy? or something to help you Mommy? Know, offset the bills. At any moment, Jean Montreville, the breadwinner and 25-year U.S. resident, can be torn away from his family. Today, the father of four works as a church custodian in Manhattan. Tomorrow, the Haitian immigrant can be deported back. Back to the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, rocked by an earthquake and deepening humanitarian crisis. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. You know, every day you got to keep thinking about deportation, deportation. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a good feeling. It's, it's killing me, it's killing me and my, and, uh, and my wife, my family. Last year's 7.0 earthquake killed nearly 300,000 Haitians and left more than 1 million homeless, a tragedy so grave the U.S. issued an immediate suspension on deportations for Haitian immigrants. Yet last month, the Obama administration quietly lifted the ban, resuming deportations for those with criminal convictions. Even those like Jean Montreville, who paid his debt to society, serving 11 years behind bars for selling drugs in the 80s, he was released from prison in 2000. I've been home now for more than 10 years without any infraction, you know. I married, on, I used to own my own business, you know, I work, I pay taxes, you know, I take care of my family. The very same day U.S. officials resumed deportations of Haitian immigrants, the State Department issued a warning against non-essential travel to Haiti, alerting Americans of continued high crime, limited police presence, lack of medical care, and a cholera outbreak. An epidemic so bad, the United Nations has made a $174 million appeal to fight the outbreak. It's not good. Uh, it is now spread uh, all the way across the country because, as you know, cholera is a contagious disease. It's affected over 100,000 people so far, uh, and uh, uh, over 2,500 people have, have perished from the disease. According to attorney Sunita Patel, the deportations are a violation of the Conventions Against Torture and the UN Declaration of Human Rights. Setting someone back to a situation where they are likely to die or, or face a situation where they are um, facing the possibility of death is potentially a violation of our obligations under international law. Yet according to Immigration and Customs Enforcement, up to 700 Haitians with criminal records will be sent back this year to a nation racked by violence, food shortages, and disease. A prospect that brings a feeling of fear to this American family, a family broken up not by divorce, but by their own government. It really doesn't make sense to me. And Obama really needs to take into consideration the separation of families mm -hmm. because he's leaving a lot of children fatherless. And the lives of fathers like Gene, arguably in danger if or when his home becomes Haiti. Marina Portnaya, RT, New York.